gente seguir em inglês aqui por vocês, tudo tranquilo? Você prefere que a gente faça as duas coisas? Tudo bem? Tudo bem. So, guys, first of all, thank you very much for coming. I mean, it's a very special panel for me. I like having one people from uh, different from it, uh, different countries. So, um, Federico from Uruguay, Alejandro from Colombia, Christian, our Gaúcho, Brazilian guy, and also Ribi from, from Mexico. So, I think it's a very special uh, panel. Uh, I think the first thing would be you guys introduce yourselves, talk about uh, your company. Uh, the panel is supposed to talk more about uh, the IPs itself. So, if you guys want to introduce the IP, talk more, uh, more about it, uh, just feel free to, to make it. And, and then we can have some questions and open to the, to the audience. Uh, Federico? Okay, well, I'm Federico, I'm from Uruguay, from a company called Comedo Games. Uh, we are, we make mobile games, so far we work on two of them, both of them, uh, they are our own IP. Um, the first one is called Bullet Boy, it's, uh, it's about a little boy that shoots himself from cannon to cannon, kind of like uh, Donkey Kong Country Super Nintendo games. Uh, we we got really lucky with that game uh, that uh, it got featured worldwide. Uh, we got over three million downloads. It's a free-to-play game. Uh, we also were chosen uh, between the 25 best games of the year for the App Store in Latin America. And and also well, our second game was is called Mars Mars, which we launched that last year. That got um, about 5 million downloads, so also a great feature. It's also a, an IP that, that we developed, especially. We got, you know, we were lucky to get uh, awards, like uh, a design, uh, an editor's choice in Google Play, and a runner-up award in, for Game of the Year in the Latin American Store, in the App Store. And, well, so far, we're doing, uh, Doing okay, we were able to make our games. We're working on a new game that's also an IP, an IP that we make on our own. So far, we've only been working on, on our own IPs, and it's it's challenging, but it's 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 rewarding. Um, my name. Oh. Will you show something or no? I already No. If if you want, there's something that you. you have well, to I can take it. Yeah, so this is basically our team that we work on the first two games. <laughs> this is this is Bullet Boy, the, the game on the Some some stats, a few million downloads, good feature. Uh, we published this game with Congregate. Uh, that's something I didn't mention. Mars Mars, the second game, it's got a um, better feature worldwide. Uh, we got an editor's choice in Latin America, for instance. Five million downloads, editor choice for Google Play worldwide. We got a nomination for the Google Play Awards. We were a standout indie. Uh, that was really cool. Um, yeah, so it's it's really awesome. We're really happy to be able to do this. Day. Uh, I mean, it, it's our lifelong dream to be able to make our games the way we want to make it. Um, yeah, that's, that's it. This is just some complete information in case someone wants to get in touch with me. So, um, my name is uh, Alejandro. Um, I uh, founded a company called Brains in Colombia. Uh, we've been in business uh, for about uh, uh, seven years. Uh, I'm going to skim through some uh, boilerplate. Uh, this is our standard kind of just uh, stuff, so I'm just skipping through that. Um, we, we've been in business uh, for this is almost seven years now. Uh, we're about 30 people team. Uh, we've uh, only worked on original IP and, and our own games. Uh, fortunately, uh, we've been we've been lucky. We 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 got uh, invested early on by a VC fund that allowed us to to scale, uh, which was also kind of interesting. We uh, we've launched uh, a few games. Uh, the first game that we launched uh, was uh, Vampire Season. It was a tower defense game. Uh, we were very new to the game creation um, uh, world, uh, and uh, we, it caught us in the 
moment where uh, app store games uh, passed from uh, paid games to free to play. So uh, it was our first free to play game. It was a hard transition for us, a great uh, success. Uh, we had uh, uh, millions of downloads. Um, and we also got um, um, shortlisted in the top uh, uh, games of the year for Apple in 2013, in the best of 2013. We got uh, also um, uh, featured around uh, the world uh, in different uh, places, and especially because it was a horror-based uh, tower defense game, we got the main banner featured uh, in, uh, in the US uh, for Halloween. Um, so the uh, second game was uh, actually uh, we co-produced with another local studio in Colombia. Um, it was called Audio Ninja. It, uh, we self-launched uh, uh, and we self-published the game uh, as, as we did with Vampire Season. We put it as number one uh, music game in 67 countries. Uh, we got the first choice, and, and, and that this game was actually runner-up for Game of the Year in Apple uh, in the region for 2013. Um, then uh, we decided to start working in, uh, in conjunction with the uh, publishers. The uh, first game that we launched with the publisher was called Mark of the Dragon. Uh, we got uh, uh, about uh, uh, 1.5 million downloads on, on, on that game uh, just on launch, uh, but we uh, had to learn the hard way about uh, um, heavy like online um, games. Uh, we didn't have a lot of back-end experience and we had a lot, incredible lot amount of issues. Uh, we had to pull the game a few months later because uh, it, it was just way too much uh, complexity <laughs> trying to, to fix uh, uh, around hacking, around uh, piracy, uh, around uh, many issues. Uh, after that, uh, we, uh, we, we worked on uh, many games. Uh, in between those games, we, we have canceled like eight games uh, that, that we start and we don't feel are really good. Uh, we're currently working on an RTS game called World War II, um, which is in pre-release. Uh, we currently have it available in Colombia, Mexico, Argentina, Chile, and I hope it'll do very well. Uh, so, so yeah, that's thanks. Boa tarde. Vou falar em português, quebrar o protocolo. Ótimo. <laughs> Meu nome é Christian. Eu trabalho na Rockhead Games. A uh, Rockhead Games ela é a empresa desenvolvedora de Starlight Adventures, que é um game mobile que ano passado uh, teve uma premiação nesse festival que foi motivo de muito orgulho para toda a equipe como o melhor game brasileiro e, o, e sendo um game mobile que é, que é incrível porque a gente tem jogos muito incríveis também no PC e no console e concorrer todos juntos na mesma categoria foi muito inesperado esse prêmio e bom, como que a gente chegou até esse ponto é, a, a minha história, particularmente, começa há 20 anos atrás como desenvolvedor de games aqui no Brasil, na época que não existia nem celular, praticamente. Então, a gente trabalhava sempre com PC, depois com consoles. Então, a, na minha primeira empresa, eu, a gente vendeu a empresa e tudo, e continuando continuidade na minha carreira, a gente fundou a Rockhead Games, que em seguida uh, foi quase que impelida para os mobile games, que a gente sabia fazer outro tipo de game e uh, o mercado estava realmente mudando em 2012, foi eu acho que a grande virada assim, que todos os publicadores estavam bem apavorados com essa, com essa a força do mobile que estava chegando. Então os primeiros mobile games que a gente criou uh, foram praticamente testes de todas as formas que você possa imaginar para que a gente aprendesse game design novamente, os controles eram uma tela de vidro, que a gente não tinha mais botões, e os modelos de negócio eu acho que são uma das coisas mais uh, que, que exigiram que a gente pensasse melhor o game design. Então, uh, um, uma das críticas que a gente recebeu lá no início foi a questão do, do game, ele não tinha... Uh, deck appeal, é, assim, a gente fez uns games que não tinham personagens, eram super legais o gameplay, mas uh, a gente disputava com outros jogos na loja com um íconezinho desse tamanho, é, que a gente pode dizer assim, que é só 120 pixels por 120 pixels. E ali a gente começou a se olhar e, ok, então o próximo projeto a gente vai fazer de tudo para que ele ícone seja reconhecível. E a gente começou a trabalhar então né, em personagens 
um universo e, e ao mesmo tempo estava fazendo um, um mestrado que estava se falando em transmídia e começou a cair a ficha, cara. Olha só, a gente faz game free to play. Um, a gente tem 5 milhões de downloads já com Starlight Adventures. Uh, a gente pode uh, divulgar uma marca, um universo com um, um personagens e usar isso futura, futuramente para outros produtos, para ajudar inclusive as pessoas a reconhecerem aqueles personagens lá. Olha, eu vi o game Starlight, agora tem um outro ícone com aqueles personagens, é outro jogo. E a gente está fazendo isso, a gente já está lançando o segundo. Então a estratégia é fortalecer o mesmo IP, mantendo foco. É, grandes empresas fazem isso e eu não entendo por que as pequenas não fazem. Né, focar naquele IP e pensar em transmídia, porque a, a própria televisão ela, ela, ela já tem per, ela tá perdendo uh, uh, a força que tinha antigamente, ainda mais assim pensando em crianças, elas nascem já em cima do celular, em cima do tablet. Então o que, que elas estão vendo? Elas estão vendo games, elas estão vendo seriados, elas estão vendo YouTube. Então eu acho que a gente tem uma coisa que é inacreditável nas nossas mãos. Né? A gente tem como gerar um IP, gerar um uma marca, personagens e tudo, e a gente tem que aproveitar isso. Essa é a nossa estratégia, espero que dê certo. All right. Uh, after that, uh, me, my name is Antonio Oribe. I'm from Mexico City, and I'm the co-founder and director of Hyper Beer Games. Our biggest game is Kleptocats, that's our main IP, that's the thing that we're still pushing. Uh, Hyper Beer started, it's fairly new, it started like, three years ago in 2014, and it was only at two friends' studio. It was my friend Juan Pablo, which is an artist, and me as a programmer. We did all this, uh, we started making just whatever we wanted to do for mobile games, because I come from a mobile development background. I did Android and iOS apps before, and he came from a, a, like comics and animation background. So we decided to work together, building something on our own time, while we were working in like the day job, as we call it, Uh, to get money to pay for food and rent because we need that to live. And on our nights and on our weekends, we decided to work on this in several games or whatever we wanted to do, just like small, simple, casual games for mobile. Because we know, even though everybody wants to build the next Halo or the next whatever big game, you have to start small when you don't really know what you're doing. So that's our way to start. We just choose a name which is Hyperbeer for us or like for whatever big reason that you wanted to build your game, choose a name to just have something that is not Antonio or Juan Pablo, it's, it has like a brand. And then from there we just develop whatever we feel like to put it under our games. Club to Cats got released uh, one year ago. It started as a joke. Uh, it was Club to Cats, it's about cats that steal things. Uh, the game is, it doesn't really have gameplay. It's, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that I don't have any, any uh, like images or videos to show you, but it doesn't really have gameplay. What you do is you, you get a cat in an empty room, you tap it, it goes out and it tells you to wait, and then you see a counter that says like, I don't know, 15 seconds or something. And then it comes back and it shows you like something that it stole from outside. You don't see him going out, you don't see, you don't interact with it like while it's out, you just wait for it to come back, and then it shows you something weird, something funny, something relatable. For us, we have some things from uh, our favorite shows, our favorite movies, or, just regular things that you find like underpants, like a t-shirt, like a luchador mask, I don't know. Uh, whatever you can imagine, we put it there. It started as, uh, it was 100 cats, 100 and something items in this room, and now it, it is eight rooms. We're about to release the nine one. It has thousands of items. It, it has like 500 cats or something like that. And people are still playing it a lot, are still downloading it. It passed six million downloads recently. It made more than $800,000 in like a year and it's still making money. It's offline, it's, it's what I call it something like a window to a different world. Because in this, in, we cannot compete to like big companies that make like awesome games on mobile. We're competing with Nintendo, we're competing with Square Enix, we're competing with all these other masters of, of developer, developing that we only have a, an opportunity to make this small thing. And What this game is, is just an opportunity to look at this weird world and then for like one minute or something that you put it back in your pocket and it goes out and to do something else and then when it's back you just look at it and it's like, oh, this is nice and that's it. We just make it, make, try to make it relatable, try to make it like easy to play for everybody. Even like if you're in a meeting or something, if you're in a school and you're in your work, you can just grab your phone, just 
check it and then go back to it. So everybody wants to play. Like retention was really good for that game because of this like silly and simple mechanic. And obviously we published. Uh, sorry, just keep going. We published several games before this, and they didn't make us any money. Uh, but we learned a lot from it. We have four games before. And we play with different ideas. What the first one is just a silly character that jumps, and that's it. And you shoot things to other. Uh, through other like monsters that appear on the screen, and that's it. We didn't make any money. It had like 1,000 downloads, but it was like amazing for us because we had just one game under our name, so it felt real to us. Then after that, I dreamed about a mechanic for a game with uh, like orthography or spelling. We call it palabras with a C, like incorrectly spelled, and it's just about putting the correct letter for the grammar of the thing. And that got a lot of attention in Mexico and some uh, Spanish-speaking countries because it's something. It's fun and something that people can enjoy, but it's also teach you something, like it's, it's, it's about spelling. And from there we decided to make something like a little bit more premium because we, are, we got like 200 or 300,000 downloads on the other one. So we, it got into our heads that we had everything to succeed. So we sold a puzzle game, uh, like match three, kind of hard, it's called Mortitos. And it made like, I don't know, like 100 downloads or something because we decided to sell it because it's like, Okay, we got hundreds of thousands of dollars now. We are ready for the world. We are ready to be millionaires. So we decided to put a price on our next game, and nobody downloaded it because the world, the world is not ready to pay for games that they don't know anything about. They, they, if like for example, the last Nintendo game, like the Mario Bros. game, they got I think like three percent of uh, paying users at the end, and if not even Nintendo can convince people to to buy your game, it's it's difficult for us. So you 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 need to figure out strategies to get that. So after that, PubTokets happened, and it helped us a lot to, to understand the market and to, to try to be a little bit ahead of the curve of whatever is happening in the mobile world. And after PubTokets, we released three other games. We, we, our games now get to millions of downloads, but it's, our main problem is to keep users still entertained and still coming back, and obviously monetization. It's, that's the thing that we are trying to learn more. We haven't hit another success like PubTokets, at least in that thing. PubTokets is still going. But we're like working towards getting better at that, and I think that's it for me. Interesting. Yeah, it's nice to talk about for for where we came from until we get something that really works. So uh, Uribe uh, told us where the Capto Cats came from. It's uh, just a joke, and I think one of the biggest challenge of starting new IP is what to do because uh, at the same time that you have the, the freedom to create, it's so hard to understand because we are doing business, uh, we, we need to live from there. And so, um, so we, just for example, we, we made Horizon Chase and it was okay, but what if you have made something that didn't work? And so I'd like to, to hear from you guys, uh, how you guys get into Mars Mars, uh, WWD and, and start it. Why those universes you guys choose uh, to, to create? Uh, for us, it starts with a mechanic that we want to explore. Like, for instance, Bullet Boy. We started thinking about this, uh, like the, the, the barrel shooting sections in Donkey Kong Country, when you would uh, shoot Donkey Kong from one barrel to another. We thought that was a really fun mechanic and we wanted to explore that into a full game. And, and we started thinking about uh, things related to that. And well, the you know the, the circus, the, the 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 guys that shoot themselves from cannons, uh, that that was uh, a, 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 a quick inspiration, uh, something that came to us. And then we well we figure out like well, what do you shoot the, the bullet, and that's how bullet boy came to be. For instance, for our next game, <coughs> we are we we have this. This, uh, we're doing. We're working on a game, a game that's called, that's. It's about digging your way out of a tower. So we kind of thought uh, about uh, the the game is called Once Upon a Tower, and it's basically uh, what we were thinking. We had this this mechanic that we like, like digging down, uh, trying to to get away. And then we, we, we came up with the concept of, I mean, we thought about the, the fairy tales where the princesses that are locked in the tower, like Rapunzel, and there are a lot of them. And we tried to, we, we thought it would be funny to reverse the, the situation and have the, instead of have the princess waiting for Prince Charming to come rescue her, uh, you, she would try to fabricate her escape. So 
I mean, I, I think that with that thing, like twisting uh, uh, a concept that already exists, it can be a powerful way to get uh, to get something new. And I, we still haven't released the game, so we don't know if if, if it will be successful or not. But as did, at least when we tell people about it, when we share it with people, they 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 everyone seems to like get. Uh, oh, okay, so you're escaping. You're the princess, like, the, like having something fa familiar and, and, and twisting uh, seems to be working. So uh, I, I don't think there's like a, a recipe you can follow, but uh, I'm just trying to show that, that in, in some of our games the, the, the way we are, we are the process we follow. So for us, it's always about the mechanic first, the mechanic, and then. Uh, trying to think of a concept that's that would get people that attracted, that that people can understand. I think, for instance, kleptocats is something similar like that. Uh, like it's something you can tell someone and it makes sense. So that's how it's worked for us. Um, for us, uh, we we learned the hard way because, uh, as I mentioned, we we got invested almost as, uh, as soon as we founded the company. Uh, we're extremely lucky, but but that brings a burning because you have a lot a lot of money and you think that you can do all sorts of stuff. So we started making a lot of mistakes and we burned uh, much more money than we should. And uh, the first game we actually validated the game once we had already burned uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars on it. So so it was a very bad idea because uh, we we just follow our instinct, then get a big group of people to work for many months and then you find out that it's what you're doing is not fun, it's not engaging or it's not going anywhere uh, and you're chasing your tail. So that's, uh, that's how we used to do it. Uh, now, now we're a lot more careful um, and, and we, know we, we also at that point uh, were making many games at the same time and we decided a few years ago that we didn't want to do that, we wanted to do a, we're a one game studio until now. Um, and uh, we devote all of our energy, our efforts, and, uh, and our passion to one project at a time. Uh, so we, when with World War II, uh, what we did is uh, we first, uh, we tried to validate as, as soon as we could. So uh, the first thing is uh, when, when my partner, Jairo, uh, who is the creative director, had the initial idea, he pitched it to our management team. We thought it was funny, we liked it. Uh, so uh, he, uh, we allowed him to make a very short or hire out uh, uh, or, or get the artist to make a short deck, like a three page, four page deck on the game just to get the sense of the graphic. We're very uh, visually oriented and they came up with these um, characters made of uh, plasticine of dough. Um, um, they were cute looking but were badass but were kind of inspired by popular culture and we liked that and so we I started a, a prototype process um, and the prototype we worked uh, on a very very agile um, fashion with a very small team like two people three people and we were just uh, checking day after day uh, and uh, one week later, we are already testing uh, mechanics. Once we like the mechanics, we work uh, on the core. When the core is, uh, was done, it took us like uh, like a month. Then at that point, we we kind of uh, it, 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 uh, we started thinking about green lighting the project as a whole. Until that point, uh, we were just experimenting and would just cut the project, and and then kind of. Um, then we developed the minimum viable version of the game and we released that on the store in December. It was just, you open the game, there's uh, two buttons, one to set up your team and one to go to battle. And that was it. And no uh, meta game, no monetization, anything. And, uh, and we started seeing from players kind of feedback and seeing how that worked. And, and we've been iterating that model. Right now we already have the meta game complete and we're, and we're adding the monetization later. And we're already released like 10 updates uh, since then till now. And the other thing that, 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 um, that, uh, that affects our, the way we create uh, or how we start uh, original projects is uh, before, um, as I mentioned, around 2013, we decided to start working with publishers. And publishers would say, uh, why don't you do some awesome 2v2 uh, battle game like Summoners were? Or why don't you do this like that? And, and we started kind of following these kind of trends. And, 
and uh, at that point uh, all of the games were fantasy uh, uh, wizards and and um, and dragons and uh, all of these characters, uh, mythical characters that we never had here in 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 or at least in Colombia, we never had any of those characters. Uh, we found out the very hard way after two or three cancelled projects that we do not relate to that as uh, uh, personally, artistically, uh, or culturally relate to that. Uh, so we decided to go back to our roots, like our first game where we try to make fun of, of our perspective of the Western culture. So it's more based on uh, theme, uh, memes, uh, on a comedy. In, in the case of Orwardo, it's a comedic violence, so it's over the top, violent and gory, but uh, very cute characters at the same time. So, so try to find the original angle, something that is really yours, and it's not something that uh, the stats uh, or, or, or um, uh, what, what, the, what the ecosystem is selling you not, not necessarily is good because there's people who actually are passionate about those teams that can create them better than you. So. No nosso caso, então, uh, como que a gente construiu Starlight Adventures? É, uh, bom, o processo de criação eu, ele é interativo, então ele, ele tem um input de preferência de o máximo de pessoas do time e aí o resultado daquilo com certeza tem a cara daquela equipe e isso é muito importante na área de games é utilizar o perfil diferente de cada um cada um vem contribuindo com coisas legais e no início a gente tem uma folha em branco é um, é um pânico o cara não sabe para onde chegar então ter alguns limitadores nesse processo de brainstorm os constraints eu acho que é importante desde o início como eu comentei lá no início, o nosso constraint inicial era nós temos que ter um ícone com um personagem. Isso já é um constraint. Então, a gente construiu é, gameplays que são legais. Isso é o básico de qualquer game, tem que ter um core gameplay interessante. Então, através de protótipos, de preferência sem gráfico. Até a gente brinca, né? Se eu fizer um protótipo em caixinhas, sei lá, e, uh, uh, e o cara bota o desenho de um tanque, um tanque de guerra, alguma coisa assim, ele já está limitando uh, o que, que pode ser feito com aquele gameplay. Porque daqui a um pouco eu quero que pule para ficar legal. E o cara vai olhar, mas o tanque não pula. Então está errada a ordem. Então, a gente fez uh, muitos brainstorms e cada vez que a gente avançava um passo em direção a um gameplay, a gente tinha mais limitadores para a gente pensar. Só que aquilo ia guiando no processo, a folha ia se preenchendo aos poucos. Então é um processo interativo. Uh, demorou dois anos para criar o game, as mecânicas, os personagens e a gente tinha os, os chefões de cada mundo, cada, cada mundo que a gente fazia era temático, a gente pensava num tema, ah, o tema é fogo, como é que é o chefão? Então é, é super legal de fazer, mas dá muito trabalho, com certeza e é um processo que eu sugiro interatividade e participação do máximo possível de pessoas do estúdio para que aquilo tenha cara de, de fica com uma identidade única naturalmente então é, já, já evita até que uh, seja feito por uma pessoa todas as ideias e o cara tem uma, uma influência tal já fica meio copycat de alguma coisa então é um jeito até de evitar esse da identidade ver, verdade, verdadeira assim ao, ao IP então, mais ou menos assim You told us about CleptoCap. Uh, do you like to add something about your other games? Yeah, uh, for us, it's, it's as others have said. It's not like there is not a path that you can follow to create something. It sometimes it comes from different places. As I mentioned, one of like the spelling game come to me in a dream, which is ridiculous. But like the main idea came to me. I dreamed about the gameplay, and then I, I, I as a joke, I told it to a friend, and he said like that sounds that something that I will play, and I was like ah. Maybe I should make this, and when I because it was super simple to make, I made it, and it was interesting. I validated the idea with other people, and everybody was like, "Oh, this is fun and good, cute." But for Clutter Cats, it started as this joke because we were mad at, at the consumers because they they don't want to put pay money. So we decided to make this game where you just have to wait; you don't do anything, and then the time is gonna get bigger and bigger, and then you have to like watch an ad or pay something to make the cat come back quickly and that's the main mechanic of the game and we find a way to make it less evil less jokey more like balance and, and that it made sense for the game and it worked for chickens for example which is the, our, our latest game which is about chickens that are like pokemon in a way they're like these creatures 
that are chicken-like, they are called chichens, and the, the idea came from chichens. It's a bad spelling of, of chicken from another game that we were trying to build. And then we, we have a weird chicken in the first room of Kleptocats that didn't have a name. So we decided to name it Chichen because it, it was, for us, it sounds silly in Spanish. So we were like, oh, Chichen's this and Chichen's that. And we were laughing. And then we have a character who was a chicken and the name. And it's like, well, let's build a game around this. So sometimes the mechanic comes to you. Sometimes it's a theme for like, Muertitos is based on Dia de los Muertos. That is something really, uh, that, that the Mexicans, we really like. And I'm from the state of Michoacán, which is like super, Dia de los Muertos is super big there. So I told my, my, my friend, my artist friend, I want to make a match three game with Dia de los Muertos team, thematic, uh, or the style. And, and we tried to make something like, but we had like a couple of weeks before uh, we wanted to make it. And I told him like, at the very least, if we don't have any interesting idea to create this puzzle or match tree or whatever, we will just make what like a regular match tree because I wanted to have it ready for Dia de los Muertos and Halloween, which is like super close. And the the artist had the, the 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 mechanic and the idea that we ended up building in the game, but the team was there first. So we had a name and we have a team, and then we had the mechanic and and a little bit of an idea of a mechanic, which which was a uh, match tree. But like things come out of nowhere sometimes. You are building something like. The game we built after Club to Catch is called Alchemy, which is like a mix and match game uh, based on like alchemy. And it, the main concept comes from a, one of the early prototypes that we killed before from, from something else called Ale Alebrijes in Mexico, which are like nightmarish looking creatures. And that was a mechanic, and we put it into Chichens at some point to mix and match things. And then we didn't like it because it made the game so complex, so we removed it and we make it an, another game. We just gave it like a team and a, and a like art style, and then we added the mechanic that we already had. So sometimes it's like it comes from the team, sometimes it comes from the mechanic, other times it comes from other things that didn't make sense for other games. Uh, so who, uh, guys, we're gonna open to the audience questions. So can you start with questions? Eu não sei se tem microfone aqui na sala para perguntas, ou se tem alguém para... Nossa, acho que a organização sumiu. <risos> Houston, não leva para lá. Ah, se quiser levantar e fazer então voz alta, talvez, acho que a gente consegue entender. Alright, alright. Uh, I'm just going to ask about uh, the, the character. Uh, how was it when, it, when it Club to cats? Yes. Uh, so, as I said, you send the cat out and it takes a little time to come back. So the, mon the main thing for the monetization is after you send the cat, the, the time goes, uh, it, it gets higher and higher. So at some point you have to like wait a half an hour. So what we do is when you send it out, we show you like a, a pop-up that tells you like if you want the cat to be back immediately, you can watch an ad and get that. Uh, other thing is that uh, we let you watch ads in some other places like as uh, prices and then you can get like some coins that you can use to buy clothes or uh, get another cat or things like that and because the, the game has a lot of content it, it's it looks like a pet game because the cat is always on the front except when you send it out but like it's always on the front and you can put like a lot of different ridiculous clothes based on memes and uh, popular culture and comics and video games and other things like it's just full with reference so there is something for everybody that plays it so when you play it the first time and you see a couple of weird things you, you try to get more into it and then we always have like these things where you wish we, we give you like oh if you buy now you can get uh, this in a purchase with a discount and that can get you like five cats and these clothes and another room and things like that so the, right now the, the game has so many like so much content that for users is like, okay, I can put money or I can watch ads or I can just play it. So it's based half on ads, like the revenue is half on ads and half of in purchases. Awesome. I already in 2017, what are the plans for the next games? Me? For all those who speak Spanish, what are the plans for the next games in 2017? We're, we're, because, uh... What are the plans for the next games? But that everybody will understand if I didn't. Uh, if like for the next, uh, we're working on, we're trying to 
build on top of Kleptocats. We're working with some uh, merchandising deals for like t-shirts and, and plushies and things like that. Right. And we're also like talking about may maybe making a like small animated like gags like Puka like or I don't know. Happy Tree Friends or something like that, like 20 seconds or 30 seconds videos, funny. Yeah, no, 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 no. So we're trying to build a brand on top of this thing because it, like a lot of people reacted to it, they really liked it, and we're trying to build on that. So our next game, it's we're planning or decide, designing the next club to get. In our case, we are already launching the second game based on the universe of Starlight, but it's another mechanic, it's totally different. I think this is the point, making things different. Já tem um outro game que também que a gente já está produzindo que é totalmente diferente. Não é o 2, né? que seria o mais esperado e o mais comum. E também projetos de transmídia, que é uma série animada para televisão, que é um projeto daí de longo prazo, digamos assim. E até lá a gente espera lançar mais games. Um, um, in our case, um... We we are just focusing on World War II. Uh, there is a lot of potential and a lot of things that we want to explore. So currently uh, we're adding a system like a guild system, but we current, uh, constantly do experiments. So for example, uh, and, and we have tried to keep this agile system going. So uh, a few weeks ago we tried uh, local matches. So it allows, right now uh, this game a uh, match makes uh, people around the world uh, one versus one um, but uh, we wanted to see what happens if you are sitting on a cafe and want to play with uh, somebody that's there locally so we enabled local matches uh, via bluetooth or wi-fi things like that uh, we are toying around with the augmented reality with ar kit uh, as well so we just, we just add a lot, uh, we're adding more features and content and also since we're going to soft launch later this year, uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense to work on a new project. Uh, we already have ideas for the next game, uh, but we'll potentially not start uh, before the end of the year. So we are working on, on this digging game mentioned, Once Upon a Tower, that's going to be released in a couple of months. And it's uh, we're also working on a second game that will be ready this year, hopefully next year. It's about it's a sword fighting game when you have kind of like a Dark Souls inspired combat. But you have a hero, and at the same time you have a boss, and you would go <coughs> if with your hero. You will go attack other people's bosses. And well, you can on the, on the defense side you can customize the way your boss uh, fights and what kind of weapons they use and what kind of attacks and strategies they use. And well, the the the, the fighting in in the um, for your heroes is it's like an action game. There you have to move uh, one side to the other and choose when to strike. And yeah, it's it's a bigger game than the games we're used to. It, it's a multiplayer game that we are hoping to launch next year. Awesome. See all of the games out there, they have a huge mass of downloads. That's really impressive. But how do you go about this? Did you build a community first? Did you ask, went for publishers? How do you build a community in order to have a huge mass of downloads in games that require advertising uh, that require a solid advertising for financially your game returning the starting investment? Uh, for us, our strategy is to, to make a game that's unique and visually appealing for the, for the stores so that they will, uh, they will display, feature it in their stores and we get a lot of downloads for that. Also, it, the, the game itself has to be, um, has to be something that people would see and uh, somewhat, uh, I mean, it has something that hooks them or cuts, uh, catches their, their eye. Uh, so that's our basic strategy. We don't do uh, ads. I mean, we don't put ads of our game. We, we tried it and it didn't work out for us. So we basically rely on uh, having good relationship with platforms and making things that we think they'll like and they are, are unique in hoping that they will uh, they will feature us and give us a lot of downloads. For us, uh, 
before uh, with the previous games that we launched with publishers. Uh, publishers did kind of the legwork of uh, doing a, a work with the, with the platforms for featuring and, and also for user acquisition and the budget for that. Uh, actually, now our first games, uh, first two games we self-published, uh, and, and that allowed us to build a good relationship with the platforms. And obviously, if they like the game and they feel that there's value to the player and there's something unique to them, they will uh, collaborate a lot. Uh, specifically on World War II, we, we are working very actively with the platforms, so with Apple. Uh, they've been super supportive of the game. Um, even when we just launched that version that only had the battle, um, the, it was so polished. It, it was had uh, bare bones for the game, but it was very, very polished. So they put us in um, a main banner in the two countries that they, we did the test. That was Mexico and Colombia. Uh, and it was next, uh, it was the week before Super Mario Run, so we were right next to them in the first main banner. So, so I think that featuring is really important. Uh, the problem with the online uh, free-to-play games, the ones that, that have like multiplayer and, and require a lot of critical mass, is that uh, you cannot only rely on featuring, but you need to uh, invest a significant amount of money in the user acquisition. So we're, right now we are kind of at the crossroads where we decided we're uh, building up a war chest to, to self-publish and, and promote the game, or uh, if uh, we go with the route uh, that we've gone before, that uh, we bring a publisher on board and they do that for us. Our well, strategy is very similar. It's to generate a product of quality that we can have a certain type of destaque in the stores, and with certain the relationship with the store é parte disso também de mostrar a seriedade que tem por trás do produto e tudo mais, provar que realmente ele é bom. E uma coisa que o pessoal fala, ai, como é que eu faço isso? Eu, eu até comento, toda quinta-feira tem jogos novos feature nas plataformas. Vai lá, baixa todos, joga todos, sempre, pelo menos os free. E aí a gente tem que fazer um exercício, é olhar o nosso próprio jogo e pensar, ele está ali no meio? Se ele não está ali no meio, nem fala na plataforma. Quando vocês tiverem certeza que ele está ali dentro daqueles, ok, eu tenho um jogo que tinha que estar tá aqui, ele tem uma qualidade, um polimento, ele é interessante, aí está naquele momento em falar com as plataformas, ó, nós temos esse jogo, o lançamento, a gente quer fazer tal, é por aí. E, obviamente, o user acquisition é caro, tem que fazer com que a máquina gire e vale a pena. Então, por exemplo, que o advertising e o in purchase, no caso do free-to-play, seja otimizado o suficiente para compensar a compra de usuários. Isso aí é um passo que se faz tunando o jogo, muitas vezes, e fazendo soft launch. O cara pode gastar uma grana, reservar algum, alguma grana para fazer user acquisition, fazer um tuning desse, desse game até que ele fique lucrativo. Nem sempre é factível isso, né? E pode ser um problema daí, mas não é fácil, tá? Não é fácil é, cross promotion entre os jogos que a própria a empresa faz é interessante, inclusive seguindo essa linha que eu sugiro de, de manter no mesmo IP. Então fica um pouco mais fácil de comunicar talvez por aí. Yeah, for us, it's, it, I think it's just the same. It's it's trying to build something really interesting that get, gets everybody's attention. Uh, Being, being a small, being indie, and as the others said, uh, user acquisition is really difficult to, to do well, and it's expensive, and if your game is not ready to, every dollar you put is gonna get you a little bit more than that, it's not worth it. So when you have a game like that, it makes a lot of sense, and if you have the money for it, but if not, you have to use all these other, like, not, it's not free, but it's like you have to work your way around to, to get those places, the good ones. And I have some learnings that I wanted to share, like because it's related to this. this uh, on Hyper, we we're like we tried to have like a dev cycle of three months from idea to having something out. Uh, the first month is to like to, first two weeks is to prototype something. First month is to have like the bare bones. Uh, to the second month, you, we have to have like the like the, the beginning of the game ready to, to soft release or early access or something like that. And at the end of the third month or fourth month, we have to be ready to release. And it's and these are like the libraries that we try to do to to follow. 
uh, prototype fast. So, so we have tried to have like a prototype at the very beginning, something that we can play and show to people and that they can react so we can learn from it. We're super open to feedback uh, from communities, from Twitter, Facebook, friends, uh, or other game dev communities. But we are also smart about what the what we implement at the end because we own the product. Like everybody will tell you, like if you do something, like in Claptoc, the main advice that they tell us is to make it, uh, the game be smaller. Like don't wait much. But it's like, well, if I give you a waiting time of two seconds, the game is gonna last like a day. So if you want that, I can send you just a picture of how the game looks finished. Like it's not. It's, it's about understanding what the game is about. So we are open to feedback all the time and really grateful when we decide what we implement at the end. Uh, we have really quick iterating cycles. Instead of like waiting months and months to develop something, we try to do it in like weeks or at, at least a month. Push it out, see if it works. If not, we go back. And if it works, we continue in that way. Uh, every change that we do should be important. Like every thing that we are adding to the game or, or changing, it should make an, a huge impact in what we're trying to do. Uh, we, we, like in, in new games, we try to make the game the best it can be in all fronts with the resources we have. This means make it easy to share, like if people get a, a like maybe you give them a little money to share it on Twitter, like money inside of the game, to share it on Twitter or Facebook or, or help them a little bit if they do that, they progress through other things like uh, also make it easy to understand. We don't like to add like complex uh, mechanics or complex text or history because on mobile at least it's like people that play just have like a couple of minutes when they're trying to play and they don't pay a lot of attention to it. You're not competing only with games and big franchise and big uh, game dev studios. Where you are also competing with Facebook, with WhatsApp, with Twitter, with all the other distractors that they have in their phone, Netflix. So. Even, even though they are playing your game, they, it's not like in a console or PC that they devote all their time to play it. They might be just changing from thing to thing, so we try to make it easy to understand and also make it, make it easy to grow. Like in Club Talkers, we decided to this uh, room-based system so we can add more things to the game and it, it, it doesn't break. Like it's, it decides our games and our systems to be allowed to grow exponentially as we add more content and everybody has access to that thing. Amazing. Thanks for sharing. So, um, guys, uh, our time is over. So, thank you very much for coming, for sharing all those those uh, things. Muito obrigado e até a próxima. <laughs>